Now let's get started by letting me give you a little bit of a scenario of what my life is all about. Uh, good morning everyone, Jay Barrick, Sandy Sage, Beach Bum here with you and of course at the beach. Here's the, here's the view of the day. Got some killer waves going. <laughs> I wanted to do my first Beach City episode and I'm going to start in Hermosa Beach. Uh, Hermosa Beach was one of the first LA beach cities I visited when I came to LA. When I think of Hermosa Beach, uh, I think of three things. I think of, of uh, beach volleyball, surfing, and jazz. Uh, believe it or not, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Hermosa Beach was known as the West Coast Jazz Capital of America. Um, there was a bassist by the name of Howard Rumsey who lived here. I think he lived in Redondo Beach, maybe Palos Verdes, and he brought together a lot of the great jazz players of the 50s and 60s, including Chet Baker, Miles Davis, Art Pepper, and more. And they would just swing by while they're on the West Coast doing their tours and uh, play for his house band called the Lighthouse All-Stars. And so it became, Hermosa Beach became the spot for, uh, for jazz players in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Unfortunately, um, because of the racial situation at the time, uh, in the 60s and the civil rights movement, uh, there were a lot of the musicians, the black musicians traveling to Hermosa Beach would get uh, harassed, their cars would get beat up, um, you know, they, they would, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of locals doing bad things to a lot of the jazz players. So there's some dark side to that as well, but uh, thank God they came. They recorded a lot of music with Howard Rumsey. Uh, I've got some CDs myself. If you uh, check out YouTube, you can look for Howard Rumsey's Lighthouse All-Stars and hear just some fantastic jazz. I'll try to put a little snippet into this segment. Uh, so jazz, uh, really, in the 50s and 60s, was, uh, was king in Hermosa Beach. It was also, uh, a surfing was also big in Hermosa Beach. There were a number of different surfboard makers in Hermosa Beach. Some of the top surfboard manufacturers of, uh, of the 60s were here. Today it's home to Spider Surf Shop, which is one of the, one of the great local surf uh, board makers and, uh, and clothing distributors in Hermosa Beach and uh, it, it still has that, that surf culture and almost any time of the year uh, if you go near the pier you're gonna see some surfers in Hermosa Beach. But number one and you think about Hermosa Beach uh, first thing that pops in my mind is beach volleyball. It is the uh, it is a hot spot for beach volleyball. One of the things that makes it a popular spot for beach volleyball is the deep sand. The, uh, the, the sand in Hermosa Beach and in Manhattan Beach as well is really deep, it's really fine, and it really works your muscles while you're playing. So it's a great place to train for volleyball and it's a great place for tournaments. If you can play well in Hermosa Beach, you can play pretty much anywhere. Um, interestingly enough, at the Rio Olympics earlier this year, Kerry Walsh, who is a local here in the South Bay area, was mentioning that the, uh, the sand it, the, uh, the, at the Olympic court was uh, deeper than Hermosa Beach, which is really One of the rare. things I love about Hermosa Beach is that these cute little beach cottages that they built uh, when the, they first developed the area that are just right next to the beach. And the whole area um, back in the 60s, 70s would have looked like this. You would have had these uh, little beach cottages. And then, uh, of course, development took off. This uh, real estate values skyrocketed here in the LA area, and uh, little beach cottages were knocked down in uh, in favor of more modern architecture. Uh, but uh, there are some cool places out here. I'm not totally opposed to modern, but uh, it would have been amazing to see those little beach cottages. Uh, Back in the day. Another great thing about Hermosa Beach is the Strand. That's that strip of sidewalk that runs from uh, Santa Monica down to Redondo Beach. It's 22 miles in length and any time of day you can find skateboarders, joggers, walkers, beach cruisers, rollerbladers. Uh, it's just an exciting energetic place to spend, uh, spend an afternoon. 
get and getting some exercise while you're at it. place in Hermosa Beach is the Comedy and Magic Club. Um, it's been around for a long time. I don't know the full history or how long it's been there, but it's known around the area as a place where you can go watch Jay Leno every Sunday night, or pretty much every Sunday night Jay Leno plays. Even during his Tonight Show years when he was uh, was, was hosting the Tonight Show, uh, he would still spend Sunday evenings trying out new material at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach. Uh, Valley Parkway Greenbelt. Nice little uh, dog walking path, jogging path. Cuts right through the beach cities, Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach. May not be the best time of day to film in here, but uh, it's beautiful. Uh, there's not a lot of open natural areas, park spaces anywhere in the South Bay because the real estate values are so high. Developers have taking advantage of that but uh, what's here is very nice and this is a nice little path to come down I see people jogging in the morning a lot of dog walkers so 
nice and gaudy here. Downside, of course, is you've got a road right there. Uh, uh, just a beautiful little park area. And look, a Westie.